Hello and welcome to this Against the Storm tutorial on Exploration and Glades. As I mentioned in the introductory tutorial, the series will be covering all aspects of the gameplay, all of the various features and mechanics of the game. Against the Storm has undergone many overhaul changes in its 2 plus years in early access, and Exploration and Glades are no exception. However, now that the game is in version 1.0, we can fully understand and describe how its features work. This tutorial will explain all of the key features of Exploration and Glades and provide some tips and tricks along the way. Exploration in Against the Storm takes on really just one modus. Opening glades up and finding resources and finding events, and hopefully being able to solve those events. There are three different kinds of glades. Small glades, these are small in size, we can see several of them here. By default there's no symbol on them. They contain only a few small resource nodes and a chance for one of a few different types of glade events that are all safe, quote unquote. There are encampments, drills, obelisks, small caches, and treasure stags. There may be one more, but those are some examples. There are also danger glades. These are larger in size and marked by this simpler looking skull symbol. They contain a mixture of small and large resource nodes, larger safe glade events, dangerous or risky glade events, and occasionally ruins. Some of the events you'll find are large encampments, medium or large caches. They also serve as a destination for the treasure stag from the small glades. And they have various ruins in them as well of buildings that you could otherwise get the blueprint for or already have the uh, fundamental or the essential blueprint for and build in your town. Forbidden glades, those have this more complex looking skull symbol. They're also larger in size, and oftentimes they might be even just a little bit larger than the danger glades. They usually contain large resource nodes, large safe glade events, extremely dangerous or risky glade events, and occasionally ruins, including some very unique buildings. Some examples of the safe glade events are large caches and rare ruins. Glades are opened up by chopping trees up to the edge of the glade. We're going to do that here. Once it opens, you'll get an alert that includes a tooltip listing all of the resources, events, and ruins found in the glade. You can set your game to pause when these, when these alerts appear so that you don't miss them in the options, as I have done. And I can show you that option here under Gameplay and Auto Pause. Small Glades Discovered, Dangerous Glade Discovered, and Forbidden Glade Discovered. If you aren't that concerned about Small Glades Discovery uh, pausing, you can uncheck that and the same with the other ones, or check them all as I have here. I'd just like to know, you know? So, uh, this alert here tells us what all we have in this Small Glade. Two patches, you can see that in the symbol there, of Moss Broccoli, with 25 charges apiece. Two Herb Nodes also small patches with 25 charges apiece, one drizzle water geyser, and two coal veins. Small patches have a, are a single tile in size. You can see that here for all three of these. And the geyser is a two by two space. The geyser is able to, uh, you're able to build a geyser pump on it, and that will consistently be able to produce that type of water. Whereas the other resources, things like uh, the broccoli and the uh, herbs, are able to be harvested by their respective camps. If you have questions about how that works, check out my previous tutorial in this series on resources and gathering. And also we have coal here, so we would build a mine on top of these nodes in order to mine that coal. Some different types of things you can find in glades are resources, as we showed here. 
Abandoned caches, which we did not get here, but we may get over in this one. Safe events, which we have not gotten here. Dangerous events, which we will certainly get in this one. And ruins. Let's see what we've got over here. A little bit of all. So over here we have some fertile soil, which is a resource node effectively. We have some insects. Uh, these are the large nodes, the worm tongue insects, and they are a two by two. They must be harvested, as I indicated in that previous tutorial on resources and gathering, by the larger version of the camp. If you have only these small camps, you will not be able to harvest the two by two nodes. However, things like stone, clay, and sea marrow, as well as plant fiber and reeds are always harvestable because you have the regular version of the camp from the start of the game. We also have a bunch of coal nodes back here. You will always, almost always, if not always, find more nodes of coal and copper that in large glades than you will find in a patch in a small glade. Beyond that, we have also a haunted market. The market, if you are familiar, is a service building. It has the recipes, uh, or has the ability to increase your, well, we can look at it here. It has the ability to increase your uh, ability to carry resources um, by carrying, increasing the carrying capacity by 10. It also has the ability to sell uh, wine for the luxury effect and tea for the treatment effect. For all of these services, there are always two species that like it. In this case, uh, this one is beavers and harpies, and this one is foxes and harpies. We do not have beavers in this particular town, but we do have foxes, so we should be, or they should be, happy with the treatment. Wait, is luxury beavers or is luxury foxes? Luxury is foxes. I was incorrect. I always forget that one, since it was changed. Um, because this is a haunted market, if we restore it, we will get a holy market. And by that, we have to have, of course, the materials required to cleanse. And we have to have, we have to also be willing to accept the risk of this, uh, this effect. Glade events of almost every kind have worker slots. You can see that here. You can also see that over here with this open vault danger glade event that also has uh, two possible outcomes here. These workers are used to complete the event. Most events will offer two choices of paths, as you can see here, to complete it, although some will offer just one. Also, most completion paths require some kind of materials in order to do it, although there are a few that only take time and or cause a temporary negative effect. Dangerous events also have a penalty which you can see here, if you do not complete it within a set time, although these are often reversible once the event has been completed. Each available path offers some kind of reward, and with opposing paths, one will often lead to resources, as this one does here, while the other one will often be amber and or reputation, as this one is here. So for this particular event, if we do not solve it in 13 minutes, we will get a small miasma cloud which is a thick spreading cloud of miasma. It kills every living being within a 20 field radius. And that is the green circle that you see on the ground there. I kind of wish it was red. Since it's going to kill everything in that circle, I kind of wish it was red. Uh, here, in order to perform this ritual, which is a corruption type uh, uh, task, uh, we have to have 10 of one of these five resources, plus we have to be willing to sustain a 100 point increase, which is exactly one level, to our hostility while the Glade event is being worked on. If we do so, and we wait the what will be less than three minutes if we put two foxes in here, uh, a little over two minutes actually, uh, and once they cart the items we need over here to this, to this site, then we will get 30 leather, uh, five uh, plus five to Glade Event Carry, which is the ability to take items to this Glade Event and also retrieve the items from this Glade Event to return them to whatever the nearest storage building is. So in this, in and then on this side, if we provided 10 planks or five of either of these bricks or fabric, plus we were willing to accept a minus 12 penalty to resolve for 
all woodcutters and gatherers while the event's being worked on, then we could get 15 amber and a half of a reputation point. Those of you who watch me play know that I usually will pick the supplies and perks rather than the amber and re uh, reputation, although I can see later in the uh, prestige ladder that I would may start choosing these just to keep that reputation coming, just to keep that impatience down kind of thing. So in this case, I would choose this one uh, personally, normally, uh, just for my own personal style. I would investigate it and work it right away because a lot of times these effects, like the increased hostility or the decrease to resolve, will be extra bad during the storm. So I like to get the tasks done as soon as possible in the drizzle so that way I can work into the clearance if I need to, and that gives me the best part of eight minutes to finish these tasks before the storm arrives. Back to the haunted market. We can choose to burn it down. We have to provide some amount of some kind of fuel here, and then we would get five packs of luxury goods and six packs of trade goods from this particular event. Or we could choose to cleanse it, which needs us to provide 10 of the same five resources here and be willing to suffer with a minus three to global resolve, uh, which increases or which adds every 60 seconds. And for that, we get that holy market. And the good thing about the holy uh, buildings, also the flawless buildings that you see here um, in your in your in your buildings in menu in the uh in the encyclopedia is they have an additional passive effect in this case it's land of luxury where reputation generated through the high re through high resolve grows 20 percent faster for every two villagers with the need for luxury fulfilled so if you have those who like luxury so beavers and or foxes then they're going to gain a little bit more reputation when they have uh when they have high resolve than they normally would. So it's a decent effect. It's not a bad effect. And in this case, I would almost certainly uh, take this cleanse and do this task as well. Now, if I assigned three fo uh, foxes to this, because foxes have the specialization bonus, uh, which is really good for exploration because, well, the foxes have the, the forest proficiency, uh, which is on every... Uh, or almost every Glade event, including caches, which we'll talk about in just a second, then I could get this done in just over a minute. But there is no negative here, because this is a ruin. So you don't have to do this right away. You don't have to do this at all. You could leave it sit here for the rest of your game if you wanted to. But I encourage you to do to make a decision and do it as soon as you reasonably can. But since there's no negative effect, it doesn't have to be super fast. And uh, depending on this negative effect while you're working it, you may or may not want to have it running during the storm but it's okay uh if depending on what this this effect is say if you're burning this down you could run this during the storm it wouldn't be a big deal back to the caches uh, i have a couple of other ones here on the map all glade event of type cache are selectable or toggleable or uh, switchable between by using these buttons and you can see i have a small one here I have a medium one there, and I have a large one here. They're all the same type, so the, the selection will skip between them on, on the map, whatever ones you haven't uh, worked yet. And they all have the choice to break it open using some sort of stone or tool. Um, training gear being like a weapon, uh, which is a service good if you aren't familiar. Um, and you can break it open to get a bunch of resources, depending on the size of the cache, it's increased amount of resources. A perk or uh, or something also is possible. And you can, or you can uh, open it or send it to the Citadel using tools and get some amber and some reputation for it. And you can see here, the small cache has much, few, much less resources and offers much less reward on that side. The medium's a little bit bigger and then the large is even bigger. I can't remember if mediums have perks sometimes or if it's only largest. I think mediums do as well. And so that is everything. Oh, there's some meat in this glade as well that's tucked away over here. And that's pretty much everything in this glade. And that kind of gives you a, a few examples of what glade uh, events and other things look like.
There are also some biome-specific glade events. The Scarlet Orchard has the archaeology mechanic where you can find three artifacts on the map, one in each size slash type of glade. These can be worked for some interesting resources and rewards. Cursed Royal Woodlands has a unique has unique glade events in each type of glade, but they work mostly the same as events you'll find in other biomes. That is, they often require workers, they often have a countdown timer, and they have one or two paths to complete, and they offer some kind of reward. Finally, the sealed forest has the seal itself, which is required to find, work, and complete in order to successfully repair the seal. These especially have some difficult challenges, as they're intended as a milestone event. And actually, just remembered one more, the Marshlands has unique glade events in the Forbidden Glades. They are the giant resource nodes, uh, one for each of these, uh, these well, the larger versions of these three camps. Um, and you can get some really interesting resources in tandem with their three main resources, meat, wheat, and mushrooms. One final thing to note. Opening glades will give you additional hostility unless you have a perk that cancels it out. Small glades give a smaller amount of hostility, while danger and forbidden glades give a larger amount, the same larger amount. So small glades uh, have a, uh, in this, at this difficulty level, have a three point hostility, and danger glades have an eight point hostility. That pretty much covers everything about exploration and glades in the game. The remaining tutorials in this series will cover the other aspects of the game, as I mentioned at the beginning. I want to thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below, or join me on Discord, the link is in the description below, and discuss the game with me there. If there are aspects of exploration and glades that I didn't cover properly, please let me know, and I will add pinned comments to the video with any supplemental content. If you have suggestions for other tutorials, feel free to leave those as well. I will also be starting the game over, and indeed I already have, with a fresh save in a new Let's Play series, so you can see some practical use of exploration and glades in that series. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.